I want to talk about tripods again. I've talked about tripods previously in a video, which I will link to in the description below. But I want to talk more about how to set up a tripod the right way, because anybody can use a tripod, and uh, this is this whole concept of how to set a tripod up the right way is actually more important, more crucial, more essential depending on the tripod that you actually use. For example, if you're using a very thin, lightweight tripod, if you set it up the wrong way, you are potentially giving yourself worse results than you would if you had set it up the right way. So I'm going to go over to the tripod and show you how to set it up. So it's raining outside, and um, so I am out under the awning <laughs> to uh, to stay dry while I am recording this. Um, so first things first. So this tripod has a center column. Uh, as you've seen in the previous video, I have multiple tripods for different uses, but this is really my, my travel tripod. It's very lightweight, um, very lightweight. I can just pick it up with one hand, no problem. Carbon fiber. Uh, it, it's not even my own height. It's not um, as tall as me. It is actually shorter than me. With a center column, it's just about eye level, uh, just about eye level, which is okay for a travel tripod. It's not ideal for an everyday tripod, but really, if you're if you're if you're using a tripod on a daily basis, you want it to be at least eye eye level, maybe even before the center column if your if your tripod has, has a center column. Center column does come out on this one, I believe, and it does come out on my other really right stuff tripod, but it does not come out on my less expensive Manfrotto's, the Promaster I have, and so on. My grill is in there too, which is pretty cool. Okay, so the first thing to mention is that um, you really want, you, you're gonna see you're gonna have thinner legs at the bottom of your tripod, then it's gonna be thicker and then the thickest. When you are setting up your tripod, depending on the height you need, you always start with the thickest at the top, okay? So we're gonna collapse all these. Collapse them all down. Okay. So there's the tripod, as small as it gets, right? So let's say we are just doing, just need a little bit off the ground, right? A little bit higher than this. You're just gonna expand that bottom leg. Or the, I'm sorry, the top level, the top row of legs. Your tripod might have three locks, it might have four locks, depending on how many legs, individual legs you have. Now, mine, I can actually take the legs out, clean it, and put it back together again, no problem. Not all tripods can do that. So the first thing is, make sure you're starting <laughs> with the thickest legs expanded most at first. You're using the thinner legs only when you need that extra height, okay? That gives you the most stability in your tripod because you now have the thickest legs taking most of the brunt of any vibrations. They're going to do better naturally because they're thicker. Okay, next is you wanna make sure that any locks that you have, so this has a lock here, which can actually expand the leg perfectly you know, at a 90 degree angle. You wanna make sure that those are locked. That way your leg's not giving out. You also wanna make sure that your actual legs are locked, like so. Okay, mine are twist locks, so I can just twist and they will lock in place and they won't pull. I can untwist and then pull. If you are photographing in sand or on rocks, then I do recommend getting either the rock claws or the spikes if you're in sand or water um, basically, you would unscrew the feet on the bottom of your tripod and then screw in these other feet. Uh, the spikes are literally look like a little spike and the claws kind of look like a half circle with a bunch of mini spikes on it which grip the rocks. They're extremely sharp so you gotta be very careful with them. Uh, but that's, that will give you more stability if you're on rocks or sand. Next is the center column. So imagine you are now extended as much as you need to be and again this is dependent on um, you know, how the, the legs that you have, and you just need a little bit of extra boost. The center column should be the last part that you use for extra height, and the reason for that is the center column is a very weak point. 
which means that you will have more vibration when you are using that center column. Yes, good tripods will have some shock absorbent features inside of the center column, but not all of them will. This one does, so I can actually extend it with minimal vibration. The less expensive tripods, it'll vibrate a lot when you have that extended. So on this one, I twist to unlock a little bit more, and I can then go up and down at will, right? And I can lock it. I recommend not using it full height, again, again, to reduce reduce vi vibration issues. I recommend not going to the full extent unless you really, really have to, unless you really have to. When you are done, just like the, the leg locks, you wanna make sure that your center column is locked because that lock is part of your vibration reduction. If it's not locked, then you will definitely have vibration because if I go like this, just enough where it, before it drops, I can still feel movement in here. I can still shift it around, look at this. Can you see that? Right, so I can shift, I can move that, but it'll still sit there. Even with the camera, it'll sit there. Okay, so let's lock that back in place. The next thing is the head, okay? I have a ball head on this. You might have a three axis head, you might have a fluid head, whatever you have. Make sure there are two things locked in place. One is any sort of uh, twist locks or, or snap locks that can actually lock the movement in place. Those are going to stop re uh, vibration big time. It'll stop camera movement big time. That's so important. If you don't have that locked, you're gonna, not gonna have clear photos. <laughs> okay, unless of course you're doing uh, super high speed shutter, uh, super high shutter speeds. If you're doing super high shutter speeds, then you actually don't want to lock because you're gonna be moving, or lever I'm assuming, and moving around a lot. For example, if you're doing an air show or some sports or something like that, you might have it like that. Next is extremely important, the part the camera actually attaches to. This is not really for stability, so to speak. This is just for safety. If I put my camera on there and I close it, but I don't actually snap it all the way locked, the camera's gonna fall out. So make sure it snaps shut. Simple as that, make sure it is snapped shut. So when all that's done, yes, I'm hitting the table. When all that is done, you will have a very solid tripod experience and you will be able to take clear photos and know that your camera equipment is safe. Oh, one last thing. You see this right here? This is a hook. Did I get that in there? All right, this is a hook. I can actually hook my camera bag up to my center column, um, which hopefully your tripod does the same if it has a center column and that gives you additional stability. Imagine you have another weight pulling your, your tripod down, especially if you're using the center column, it'll reduce even more vibration. It's a beautiful thing. Take advantage of that hook. Take advantage of that hook, that one right there. Take, use that. Hooks are good, hooks are good. Okay, so um, do you have any questions about tripods? Comment, let me know. There's so many types of tripods out there. If you want a recommendation on a specific tripod, if you're looking at a specific tripod, tell me about what you photograph, what you're gonna be using it for, and I'll tell you if I think it'll be good for you. I've used a lot of tripods before, so, and I still have a lot of them. Ugh, tripods.